Hello, internet friends. How's it going? I'm Laura, AKA Shop Fawn B. Today, I am coming at you guys with a little haul video for my vintage store, as well as a home decor haul, which is brand new for me. If you're new here, I just recently moved into a new apartment and yeah, I've, uh, I'm starting to try and thrift stuff for the new apartment, which is very exciting. But first I wanted to start out with all of the clothing that I picked up recently at the thrift store for my vintage store. I do kind of have to laugh at it because I, Definitely a more of like a minimalist modern style. However, um, yeah, the cottage core vibe has definitely, uh, it's gotten me, which is also hilarious because I feel like cottage core, it has very springtime vibes to it. And considering we're going into fall winter or we're in fall winter, um, yeah, it, it's a little summertime, but I did find ways to make it fall winter appropriate. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. And yes, I am wearing a thrifted oversized sweater that I absolutely love. If you're curious, I picked this up at the thrift also. Uh, no, I did not go to Buena Vista University. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, let's just go ahead and dive right into the cottage core vibes that I'm talking about. Uh, first up is this floral, embroidered just like vomit of a cottage core sweater like you can't get more, get much more cottage core than this um i absolutely love the floral embroidery detail though i thought it was so cute kind of has like a little bit of a mock neck vibe and then uh yeah broke all the rules and mixed some patterns together. But this little bohemian full circle skirt, like I said, broke all the rules pairing this thing together, but I thought it looked cute together. Uh, we love a good skirt with pockets in it, and this skirt has pockets as well as an elastic stretch waist, which we also love that because hello, that means multiple sizing options available. So, okay, next up is about as 80s as you can get in an outfit. This cropped little mustard yellow number with a striping detail on it and very interesting Velcro sides. Never seen anything like that. Uh, but it definitely helps in getting it on. Like you have to unvelcro it to pull it together. I wanted to go as 80s as possible with this outfit. Like let's just make it as new wave tacky as you can get. I paired it with these houndstooth high-waisted trouser pants and yeah, black and yellow, man. It's a good look. That outfit just cracks me up though. Cause like I said, you really just cannot get any more eighties than that. Like that is, that's very eighties. Okay, I went full fall time plaid with this look, but the color tones just, you know, they go together so well. I almost thought about pairing these pants. Like they're not, they don't go together with that top that I just showed, but I almost thought about styling it together with that. But I was like, no, no, gotta go full eighties for that. It's the vibe. But these are high-waisted linen Bermuda trouser shorts. Uh, this style always comes back around in the summertime. I thought, you know, in LA, like we can wear shorts for pretty much the entire year. So I still wanted to pair these and style them, make sure they didn't uh, go to the landfill. And then I paired them with this cute little plaid button down. Love the puff sleeves on it. We all love a good puff sleeve. Okay, this next look I think is my personal favorite. I definitely connected with this look the most because it's very minimalist modern and that is the vibe that I tend to gravitate towards. But yeah, these are separates that felt like they just belong together. This is a olive green button down. I feel like you can wear this as a jacket or a top, however you wanna style it. But with this particular look, I decided to wear it just as a top. Um, and then I paired it with these high-waisted, I've seen these called easy up pants before, which cracks me up because that just means that they're really easy to pull up because they're elastic waist. Uh, but yeah, I actually have seen that used as a description for these pants. So I do throw that in my like listing title sometimes. But yeah, easy up trouser pants. I loved the uh, the little color tone vibe that this created. It just, it went well so well together. So I was very, uh, very proud of that moment. Pat myself on the back for that one. Okay, we are back to the cottage core vibe. Very Laura Ashley with this one. And this top just so happens to be Laura Ashley. 
Laura Ashley, I know, is still around as a label. Like, you can still buy Laura Ashley clothing. However, in the 1980s and early 90s, Laura Ashley was like the cottage core look. Of course, Princess Diana made it like super big and it was like a very big deal with the outfits that she wore. But yeah, this cute little button down with the ruffled neckline, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. But I paired it with this little floral midi skirt. Again, with the cottage core. It's like, why did I decide to buy into the cottage core around this time of year? I don't know why, but I'm going with it. I sell internationally, so hopefully it works. <laughs> Uh, hopefully Australia is just as obsessed with cottage core right now because this is a very springtime skirt. I like that it's it's very faded paper thin vibes to it too, which just gives it that uh, vintage patina, you know? You gotta appreciate that. Little pleated number. Okay, this one. This next one. Oof. I love a good flowy floral maxi. Can you believe the print on this one? I don't know what it was, but lately, I think it's interesting because I feel like back in the early 2010s, bohemian was where it was at. That was the style that I was, was like a very bohemian person. And then everything kind of switched to modern style. And now I'm like, I don't know, am I becoming bohemian again? Like I got that back there. All the stuff that I thrifted is very bohemian. There's this skirt. And then wait till you see the jacket that I paired with this skirt. Like you can't get any more bohemian than this. What is going on? Who am I? Anyways, this bohemian little maxi number, super cute. I love this style clothing because it can very easily go belted or unbelted depending on the style that you want to create with it. If you want to create like a, cause you know, this has like very like nightgown vibes to it, but you can also change this into like an Edwardian bohemian dream dress. And yeah, I love it. But okay, here we go. Here is the jacket that I paired with it that I'm still just like, who am I? What's going on? I could not pass on this one because it is Stetson. Stetson, ladies and gentlemen. This buttery soft, kind of cognac brown Stetson leather jacket. Ooh wee, is a good one. Uh, it has ostrich embossing, although I don't think it's actual ostrich leather. It just says clean as leather but I couldn't find anything that says if it's ostrich or not, but it's definitely embossed, but it is leather. So it is, you know, leather. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can say. I took a little bit of a risk on that one, but I don't know, man. I just, I had a feeling that I could make it work. And I really think with that maxi dress, it just, it's got a vibe. It's got a full look, you know, it's very bohemian, very, I don't know. Who am I? Okay, this is the last of the styling. And if you thought this video was going to end without featuring a nubby knit sweater, I don't know who you think I am. Clearly you think I have completely changed into a bohemian person, but I have not. I'm still on my minimal puffy sleeve draped train. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> this long line duster, nubby knit, for the win. I couldn't pass it up. Love the pattern on it. Uh, normally when I grab these, they're always like a, kind of like an ombre or like a mixed color knit. Um, normally like a beige or a brown, but yeah, this, I have found a couple um, checkered patterns like this before, but yeah, I was very excited for this one. Like I said, if you thought that this video was gonna end without a boo clay sweater, you were wrong. You were sorely mistaken. Okay, so before we jump into the home decor haul, I did wanna talk real quick about a couple pieces that I picked up specifically for eBay. And I know I haven't been talking too much about what I'm selling on eBay lately. And that's just because to be honest with you, it's just bread and butter items. I'm really only selling like, you know, regular modern stuff, just stuff that I feel like sometimes gets like a little bit of a repeat or redundant. 
Um, whereas I feel like vintage, I really enjoy talking about it. And I think um, there's so much of a story to tell with vintage. So I apologize if I know a lot of people have kind of hit subscribe before thinking that this was just gonna be like a haul YouTube channel where I just talked about what I was selling on my eBay store. So I apologize if that's what you signed up for. I know my channel is kind of changing a little bit, but your girl's gotta follow her dreams, you know? And that uh, dream is like talking about nubby knit sweaters and other stuff that I love. I did uh, still wanna share these items with you guys because they are still vintage based and I think it just might be interesting to some people um, why I am selling it on eBay. This one might kind of come as a surprise that I'm deciding not to model it. It does have a flaw on it that I just could not soak out. I tried a couple times and I think maybe there might be someone uh, in the vintage world that knows how to get the stain out a little bit better than I could, I don't know. But I did find two of these beautiful cotton gauze bohemian skirts um, with Lurex, which if you followed me long enough, you know that this is like, this is truly what a vintage dealer gets very excited over finding is cotton gauze Lurex sets. Um, they just, yeah, they're worth a lot of money. I sold the last one um, that I talked about almost probably like a year ago or longer now. Jeez, oof, that's scary to think about. But I found one in a YouTube video from a long time ago uh, that I ended up selling for a couple hundred dollars, which was very exciting. Um, so yeah, these definitely hold a lot of value. However, there is a stain um, that just seems like it's really set in on it. So I am going to list this on eBay. I think they call it like a wounded bird is how they describe it on eBay. Like if you put that in the title, it just means that, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna need a little bit of repair work, but I still think there is definitely some value in this and yeah, just a beautiful number. Again, bohemian, what's going on? What's, what's, who am I? And then this piece is a mohair cape that is just so stunning. I saw it and I was just like, oh my gosh, for a split second I thought I was gonna keep it for myself. Um, just cause yeah, this is such a rare little piece, but it is a kid's. <laughs> so I did try it on and it actually does fit me because I am child size. I'm very petite and short. So yeah, I, I did, did, did uh, the thought was there that maybe I should just keep it. But um, yeah, it's a little bit too small. It just doesn't make sense for me to keep it. So I'm gonna list it in the children's category on eBay, but it's just so cute. And like the pattern on it, everything is just, I love me some mohair. And this is the soft mohair. Normally people freak out when they see mohair and they're just like, ooh, it looks so scratchy. That's the soft kind. Um, also another tip to reviving mohair, if you do find some that are like very rough and just feel like they need to be conditioned a little bit, um, either like regular hair conditioner or um, I use a, a company called The Laundress. They make wool and cashmere conditioner that you put into the load. You don't put any like laundry detergent or anything like that. You just put the conditioner in and yeah, it revives the items so well. Just make sure you wash it on delicate and yeah, you'll never need to take that kind of stuff to the dry cleaner again. Not sponsored, but The Laundress, if you wanna sponsor me, hit a girl up. I'd love to work with you. Okay, so let's talk about this home decor haul. It's really like, it's not that epic. I didn't pick up that much. So I did want to talk first about uh, these West Elm linen curtains that I found. I was so excited for these. I didn't even think about looking up what the value was, but I found them, they were $7.99 a piece and they come with a set of two. So I found these, I got them home, I got two of them and there was like five there, I think. And I got them home and I looked them up and they're selling for like a hundred dollars on eBay. So I was like, oof, okay. So note to self, next time I go back, I need to look to see if they're still there. And they were, so I have five of them now. So I guess I'm gonna put as many up as I need to and then sell the rest. So that's kind of always fun when you find stuff that you're like, oh, okay. I can also make money as well as decorate. Like, that's a cool thing. 
And then, okay, so I'm not gonna pick the uh, the little vases, vases, whatever, however you say them. I'm not gonna pick those up because they're really heavy. Pots, we're just gonna call them pots. That I believe, I think they're just Target home, to be honest with you. I don't think they're anything like vintage or spectacular, handmade or anything like that. But I did like the painting on them and I have, uh, as you can tell, I love dead plants, plants that I don't have to take care of or water. And uh, I have a bunch more of these that I just decided to put in the, in the pots and just use that to decorate. I've been trying to think of ways to decorate my hallway. So that's kind of been a big focus for me is I just feel like that place is so empty. Um, and I'm not looking to get any um, big furniture pieces right now. Okay, and then the last things that I picked up um, at my thrift store extravaganza um, are these two candle holders. I feel like for a while, uh, especially at the beginning of quarantine, there were all those DIY videos of how to make stuff like this look like it's like a glazed handmade pottery. And the fact that this was already done for me, I was like, okay, sign me up for that. Um, I do need to get obviously candlesticks for these. I've noticed the big trend right now with candlesticks is like very colorful, um, whimsical looking candlesticks. And I kind of wanted to try something like that. I probably won't go with colorful. It's still gonna be a muted tone, but I do like the idea of these like whimsical candlesticks. I think Urban Outfitters started it. That was my little mini home decor haul and my thrift haul. So I hope you guys enjoyed all of these pieces. Let me know down below what your favorite one was. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the deal. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.